all yours. Oh, thanks for rocking with us, man. Thanks for having me here. Uh, totally, totally appreciate it. This no is sweat. really going to help to promote the book. Right, and, yeah, uh, and that's the whole purpose of it and everything. I've heard you receive, like, renowned responses thus far with been, the book. It's been amazing. Like, it's yeah. really surreal. I still don't think it's really hit me yet. Uh -huh. but, you know, it's just things just keep climbing up and just getting bigger and bigger. And mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping to happen, so... That's good. That's good. So, uh, how, how did you come up? Where did you come up with the idea for the book? Like, um, well, you know, I just got so tired of, of hearing women say there's no good men out there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I just did a radio interview with T.S. Keys on his radio show. He's actually the first person, the second day when he saw it on Facebook, and said, "I need to get you on my show." Um, and we kind of collaborated back and forth. And we had a really good time. But like I told him, like, like, like I'm telling you now, yeah. basically. Um, you know, men are always getting blamed for the bad choices that oh, women do. I know. And, you know, if I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. <laughs> if you know I'm an idiot and you continue to go out with me, then who's the idiot now? Yeah. You know, so it's a simple thing as that, you know. So it's just, you know, females have no idea how it is to talk to, a com for a man to go and talk to a complete stranger, mm -hmm. come over and say hello without being looked up and down or them hearing something, they, they, or you saying something that they want to hear. Yeah. So, yeah, so I just thought it was time to hear from a man's point of view. There's all these books, there's all these magazines, there's all these movies depicting men, and, you know, it's just time to hear what men have to say. You know, let women see it's not as easy for us, you know, when it comes to the dating process, mm -hmm. you know, as they think it is. Right. So, so with all the, um, you know, the response that you've received from the book and everything like that, who would you give credit for? Um, and thanks, you know what I mean, for, for the success of this book thus far. Well, actually, I, I mean, I'm not trying to sound conceited or nothing. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> go talking, ahead, go ahead. No, you're all right. But I've been doing all the promotion basically myself because we actually haven't, you know, had our official launch mm -hmm. yet. My uh, guy that handles all my social media, James Hickey, <laughs> um, is a... Uh, you know, set me up a web page, and he's been hitting the social media because he's a guru and stuff like that. Mm. And but I've been doing guerrilla marketing, which is out pounding the streets and just walking up to people and saying, "Hey, support my book." Right. You know, it's only ten bucks. Yeah. You know, what's ten dollars? Yeah. People, for, people forget how important guerrilla marketing really is when it comes to the success when you're launching from the ground up. Exactly. And so I have two more months until um, till the actual tape publishing does their national launch. Mm. And then once that happens, I'm still not going. I'm still going to have the books with me. You know, right. the books right here. Yeah, you know? right. Yep. Um, but uh, <coughs> you know, I'm still going to pound the pavement and, and always have the books on me because it's just so much more personable when you actually hand somebody a book and you're able to sign. Yeah. Oh God, that's kind of the funny thing. Yeah. Let me have your si signed copy, but yeah. it's just much more personable. So. Mm -hmm. I really like doing it that way. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon it's not gonna be that easy, but yeah. Well, we all know, we all know that um, Steve Harvey, you know, had a book called <laughs> "Act Like a Man." You, you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, I'm right? Exactly so, right. so how does your, how does your book differ? You know what I mean so from from the Steve Harvey yeah. well, play? Or I, I have to say, I have to say, Steve. Um, I wrote my book. Actually, I wrote the screenplay first back in '99, and then I wrote the book format. Learn how to write that because I'm yeah. like, well, the books come out before the screenplays come out. So mm -hmm. I wrote the um, manuscript in 2006. And unfortunately, I signed with the wrong uh, publishing company. It happens. Went through some, you know, bad, bad stuff with that. Made this great, met this great guy, uh, an attorney, got me out of that contract. Um, made a phone call to my buddy Alex that works for the Padres with me. And he forwarded me over to the information for tape publishing, and here we are. Here we are. Mm -hmm. And you were doing great, I might add, man. Yes. So when are you going national? Um, like I said, it's um, New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. We're going national. Um, I'm actually having a special party for everybody that buys the book. Go before, buy that book. Before, Go get the book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a little special party. Tilt to kill, jump right in, and say, that, Eric, how can we help you? And so I want to do a special thing to everybody that bought the book to support me, right, not to buy right, the right. book, just so they can go to the party. Exactly. So, um, that's what we got going with that. And that's going to be the Saturday after New Year's. So, you know, I've read the book already, and I got to say, it was a very easy read, and it was extremely entertaining. But I, I got to know, I got to know, did you did you keep any of the names in there? Were any of the names the same? Or? Um, well, actually, I even changed my name. <laughs> my name in the book is Rick, and I'm hey, Eric, so I right. didn't change it that much. I can kind of see the similarities. But I put, um, the other characters, um, 
are definitely fictitious names, mm -hmm. you know, especially the guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, just didn't want to have to worry about any legal ramifications. So, you know, but I had fun with it anyway, so right. it was good. That's good, that's yeah. good. All right, we're very happy for you, man. And I just got to know, can we expect a sequel? From a man's point of view, or maybe actually, from, a, from a woman's point actually, of view. No, uh, women, women been telling their points of view for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I came out my book. Yeah, I know, yeah. But actually, I do have um, another book coming out. Uh -huh. And actually, I wrote a little teaser in this book. Okay. Um, it's called Women Men Don't Know. Mm. It's like, men don't know when yes means no. That's the first chapter. I got inspired to write that because one of my friends called his girlfriend and said, Hey, babe, do you mind if I go play pool and drink beer with the guys? And, Oh, have a good time. If you get too drunk, call me. I'll come get you. So about two hours later, he comes back home. He's a little buzz. Wants a little McLovin. Okay. She's yeah. all pissed off. What's wrong with you? I can't believe we paid food with your friends and drank beer. Well, I called her. You said it was okay. Well, you should have known I meant no. Well, why do you say so? Half our argument, he sleeps on the couch. First chapter, when yes means no. That's for all you do sleep on the couch out there. You're going to want this one. You're going to want this one. All right. So what's next, Eric? What's next? After the book? I mean, what do well, we got going on right now? Well, what I'm hoping to do, I mean, obviously, if the book is successful as it seems like it's going to be, I'll have the documentary that I'll be able to mm -hmm. present. And I'm just hoping that people see this and realize, just don't give up. Just don't give up. No matter how many people are going to try and bring you down, mm -hmm. you know, whatever uh, trials and tribulations you go through, mm -hmm. um, just don't give up. If you really believe in your heart that you have something good, you know, and other people are telling you that it's good, mm -hmm. then just go for it. Stick to it as long as you possibly can. Um, you know, I got the screenplay, I'm hoping, as well as the documentary. Mm -hmm. And then I got the second book. So, you know, I got four different, you know, things going that pertain to this book. Yeah. And I also have, you know, three other books um, and, you know, four of the screenplays. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully this will be actually for the reality shows too so hopefully this will be the domino effect to get me in the business which i've been trying to get into a long time you've been doing this for a yeah. very long time and i think a lot of people don't really understand how long you've actually been at this so well, kudos yeah, exactly. for all the hard work well, the that you've actually put in the really funny years. part too is people say oh there's no such thing as overnight success there is such thing as overnight success it's just getting to that point to where it's overnight success That's so let me, let me ask you this with that being said you know i mean sudden those, those sudden changes in life i gotta ask you do you believe in love at first sight? Of course. Really? Of course. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally. So, so yeah. them, drop, them drop dead gorgeous women out there, you can fall in love with them well, like right off the bat. It doesn't have to be drop dead gorgeous. I mean, you can click with somebody immediately. You see, I know if I even want to talk to somebody in the first five minutes of conversation, because I can't go out with stupid girls. Well, I just can't. You know, trophy girls, that's all fine and dandy, but that's all good for a, a short period of time. Um, you know, if you connect with somebody, it's usually the personality, and of course, you know, they have to be attractive, you want that to happen too, but um, usually if you click like that, and you're just going and flowing them, I've had situations where I met somebody, and we hung out the whole entire day, you know, but, you know, either they already had a boyfriend, or they were just getting out of a relationship, yeah, yeah. You, got, you got that, I, I have this three month morning time, I call it, mm -hmm. because Usually in relationships, you meet somebody, they still a month, month and a half is going back. You got to give them like that three yeah. week, like, yeah. you know, morning yeah, period. Like, well, they're still going back and forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to break up and da 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 and all this and that. So, right, and it's funny because I've, I've met so many girls that they go, well, I'm kind of broken up. What does that mean? What's kind of? That's, that's, What's saying, kind of? that's like saying I'm kind of pregnant. Yeah. Either you are or you aren't. It's, it's black and white. This is gray matter I that you're speaking of. I don't believe in gray areas at all. I think it should be up, down, in, out, yes, no. Mm -hmm. No you know, maybe, or kind of, you know, that's it's just me. It's real wishy-washy. Yeah, exactly. Wishy -washy. Eric, I want to thank you for sitting down with the Weed City Magazine. Thank you Go so out much. and get the book. You will not regret it. We're sitting here with author slash screenwriter Eric Edwards right here. Get the book right here from a man's point of view because you know what? It is from a man's point of view, and I got to say, you're all going to like it. Thank you, Eric. Thanks once again. Thank you so much, Brandon. Always a pleasure. All right.